Hi, my name is Dr. Fawn McNeil Haber and I'm a licensed clinical psychologist here at Brave Minds Psychological Services in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Today I am so excited to talk to you about love languages, specifically love languages in children. And so one of the most important um, tools that you have in your toolbox is your relationship with your child. It's this bond that draws our children um, near to us in seeking our comfort, our advice, um, and our guidance on different things. And so when I think about the tween years, it's this bond that helps tweens come to us with questions about lots of different things that they're learning about and experiencing in the world. It's this relationship and this bond that helps teens when they're out in the world making decisions and they hear our voice in their head telling us what reminding us of their values, what their values are and what's important and what's safe and what's not safe. It's that relationship, that trust, that influences how the teens interact with our voice in their head at those times. So really, our relationship is so important. And one of the ways that we can strengthen our relationship with our children is by learning their love language and using it to increase our connection with them. So we want to use their love language to help them truly feel loved and avoid using their love language against them. So what does this mean? Why are love languages truly important? So let's say my love language is physical touch and we'll get into what the love languages are, but let's say mine is physical touch and I love being hugged. I like to hug people. I like to hug my kids. I like to hug my spouse and that that makes me really feel loved when people hug me because that's my love language. And so I'm using my love language to share love with everyone else. But let's say your love language is not physical touch. And in fact, you find hugs to be pretty off-putting and irritating. So actually, when I hug you, I may feel like I'm providing you with so much love and you may feel like I'm really just bothering you over and over and over again. So this is how that mismatch can happen when we don't understand someone else's language of appreciation, someone else's love language. We can end up actually them not being able to receive the love we're trying to give them. And this is why it's so important to kind of know what um, your loved one's love languages are. So Gary Chapman started writing about the love languages um, prior. His book came out in 1992, The Five Love Languages, and later he wrote one for children. So what are the love languages? The first love language that I'm going to talk about is words of appreciation. And so this is when we say um, appreciative, affirming things to our child. When we encourage them about specific behaviors, apply that praise, notice things that they did, and then talk to them about it. These kids really thrive on positive feedback, getting information about what they're doing well, and hearing you say it, hearing I love you, hear, seeing you actively, listening to them speak, that the, the words that are said are important, are kind, and are generous. Um, the second love language is physical touch, the ones where hugs and cuddles and these are the kids that lay all over you and um, want to snuggle a whole lot. That, that physical touch, that nonverbal body languages, those fist bumps are really important to these kids. That that's, that's their way of experiencing love. Another love language is receiving gifts. And this may be um, small gifts. This is remembering birthdays, sometimes big gifts, sometimes little things like, you know, when you think about combining love languages, maybe it's the gift of little notes um, or a little treat that you remember that they like Hershey's kisses, so you bring them a little kiss home. So this is really about the things that you, you um, give them. Next, would be quality time. And this is the amount of time that's spent, but it's not just time together. It's that present moment focused time with them, that undivided attention, that 
the time where you stop everything you're doing and you're looking about them and the world just revolves around them in that moment. That important time you have together with them that they feel important, they feel it inside. Um, and finally, we have acts of service. And this is doing things um, for your child. So it may be helping them with their homework or packing them their lunch or helping them clean their room. But it has to do with different things that we do for their child to help them lighten their load and lighten the things that they have to do and help them get stuff done. And so that that's really how they feel appreciated and loved. So now that we have kind of array of these different love languages, it can be helpful to um, observe your child and see what language do they frequently use to communicate? Because as kids, they are going to frequently communicate in their love language because that is how they feel loved. Now, us as adults, we really need to get a distinction about um, what our love language is versus other people, but kids don't quite have that, distinguish, that distinction in the beginning. So they tend to use their love languages a lot with others. So one way is to observe your child and see the ways that they frequently express love. Another way is to pay attention to how they respond to different things that you do. If you give them a gift, are they like, oh, thanks mom, and that's kind of the end of it? Or are they the child where their whole face lights up, they stop what they're doing and they just want to um, jump into it, open it up, see what it is? Like looking at what their reaction is. Are they the kid that wants to be with you and in the same room with you and talk to you and they want you to look at them and that that quality time that you are together is really important. So paying attention to the things that they seem to respond to, to really get a sense of what fills their bucket, what fills them up the most that I do. And this doesn't mean that the other love languages aren't important. It just means that there's a primary one that really fills them up. And sometimes there's you know, when we put those love languages in order, there's one that they just mm, don't care about. And no matter how much you do it, that doesn't really, they're not really feeling the love you're trying to provide them because that particular love language just doesn't really mean anything. So finally, when we think about love languages, we have to think about the flip side. When there's a conflict, when um, your child gets a consequence, how do you administer that? And what we want to be very careful of is we want to avoid using um, punishments that tap into a child's love language. So for example, a child that loves quality time, that is their love language and they yearn for it. This is a kid that would not, it would not fit well putting them in timeout or sending them to their room. It's like the ultimate um, punishment. And depending on what's going on, you may be giving them a consequence or a punishment that's much bigger in their heart than what you intended because you're punishing their love language. That this may not be a kid that it's good to then deny them of quality time as a consequence. Or if we take, for example, a child whose love language is acts of service they're going to respond really poorly to things like promising to do something and then not doing it. Oh yeah, I was going to um, get you that book. Oh, I forgot. So um, forgetting to do things for them that you said you were going to do, making false promises um, is really going to be particularly upsetting to these kids and make them feel actually unloved. Not just that you're being unloved, thoughtful, but it may actually feel make them feel unloved. And so we really want to be thoughtful about these different things. If we grab on to um, gift giving, a child whose love language is gift giving, they, you know, kids make a ton of these things at school. They bring home these little things that they make that really are just a, a blessing. And they give them to us and we get them we get them and we get them. Well, for a child whose love language is gift giving, it's really important for you to be enthusiastic about receiving these gifts. 
because the act of gift giving is really meaningful for them. And they ex actually experience the love when you show enthusiasm for the gifts they give to you. And so it'll be important when they bring home these, these, these objects of love for you to be excited about receiving them and find some place to put them that shows how much they mean to you. And so we really want to think about how love languages um, interact with our behaviors, both in showing love and in withholding love, because we don't want to withhold love. Even when we're giving a consequence or um, a child has to make up for something, we don't want the effects of that to seem like we're withholding love in some sort of way. And so I hope this has helped you really think about, okay, finding out more about love languages, the Gary Chapman book about the five love languages in children is amazing. Or you can Google um, the love languages and find quizzes and different ways to figure out what your child's love language is. Um, I hope that this has been helpful for you. And if so, share it or visit us at um, bravemindsnj.com. Thanks.